What if I told you that one minute a week could impact your life for the better? I'm Frank Santora and I wanna invite you to spend a New York Minute with me. Why is it called a New York Minute? When you think of New York, you think fast. A New York Minute is just enough time for something significant to happen. Just enough time to make a memory, just enough time to change a life, maybe yours. Take one minute a week to transform your life with a New York Minute. Register at franksantora.cc to receive your free subscription. Today on Destin to Win. Hey, I'm Frank Santora, and welcome to a special edition of Destin to Win. Have you ever been on an airplane and you hear that all too familiar announcement over the loudspeaker that goes something like this? In the case of a loss in cabin pressure, oxygen masks will drop down. Secure your own mask first before helping others. That always seems strange to me, like I'm not gonna help my wife and kids first. But a few years ago, I realized that there is a real biblical principle buried in that statement. Jesus told us that one of the greatest commandments was to love others as we love ourselves. If you're gonna be the most impactful person you can be for those around you, your friends, your children, your family members, you yourself must be healthy enough to help. Many of us are trying to minister God's healing power to others, but we ourselves are injured and broken and we're barely breathing, but that stops right now. I'm here to encourage you to look in the mirror and minister to the person that's looking back at you. On today's program, I'm sitting down and having a candid conversation with my friend, Damon Davis. Damon is no stranger to the Destined to Win program, and together we're gonna break down this concept as explained in my new teaching called Oxygen Mask. I'm gonna teach you how to receive God's healing for yourself so you can release it to others and watch your world change for the good. Are you ready? Let's go into the Destined to Win studios for this life-changing discussion called Love Yourself. sitting here scrolling on the statistics about what happens when people don't love themselves. Mm. I mean, everything from people who don't love themselves find it difficult for people to love them, yeah. self-esteem issues, limitations in the ability to get ahead in life and advance yeah. in their career or, I mean, it's, it's a big topic. Yeah that I don't think that many people have slowed down to consider yeah. that they're supposed to really love themselves. And it's almost counterintuitive. Yeah. I mean, when I think about that, I think about other words like arrogant, mm. prideful, mm. you know, I'm stuck mm. on myself. Mm. Unpack this thing. You know, I'm really passionate about this subject. And I'm passionate about this subject because I watched somebody that I love so much in an abusive relationship. And the way that the abuser was able to keep them in the abusive relationship was by saying things like, well, if you're a Christian, then you ought to put me before yourself. If you're a Christian, you ought to forgive me no matter what I did to you and give me another chance. If you are a Christian, then you shouldn't care about how it affects you. You should only care about how it affects me. And so what I saw happening Jeez, that's manipulation. is the devil using a imbalanced teaching in the body of Christ in order to keep somebody that I love bound. Wow. And so I started to think to myself, if I'm watching somebody that I love bound because they don't know what it means to love themselves, how many other people that I minister to on a weekly basis, either in the congregation or on television, are bound because the devil is playing the same imbalance game on them? So I got to thinking about this. How can I teach this subject of loving yourself? Because in the body of Christ, 
it's like taboo to say love yourself. What do you mean? You're a Christian. You're not supposed to love yourself. If you love yourself, that's selfish. If you love yourself, that's self-centeredness. If you love yourself, you're teaching the opposite of what Jesus said. Jesus told us to put others before ourselves. And here you are going around telling people they ought to love themselves. And so all of this was funneling through my mind. And then I got on a plane. Hmm. Matter of fact, I was flying here to Atlanta where we're taping today. And I watched the stewardess take out the oxygen mask. Mm -hmm. And then the pre-recorded announcement came over and it said, if the cabin loses pressure, oxygen mask will fall from above you. Mm -hmm. Put your oxygen mask on first before assisting others. Yeah, exactly. And it, it just hit me hmm. like a ton of bricks. And I said, now, Christians would probably think that's selfish. <laughs> and they would die. And so would their loved ones on the plane because they don't realize the wisdom that is in that. It's not selfish to put your oxygen mask on first. It's actually for the betterment of the people you love to put your oxygen mask on first. Explain, explain. So, because all of a sudden God spoke this to me. He said, how can you help somebody else breathe if you can't breathe? Okay. Then he said this to me, how can you help somebody else financially if your finances are a mess? True. Then he said, how could you help somebody else in their marriage if your marriage is a mess. Very true. And then he said, what I'm looking for is sons and daughters who are healthy enough to help. Wow. Then I started remembering things like what Jesus said, the golden rule. Love your neighbor mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. you love yourself. yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you can't love somebody unless you love yourself. Gosh. And so this isn't about self-centeredness. It's not about selfishness. Wow. It's not about us stroking our flesh. It's about it's if you're not whole, you'll never help build healthy, whole relationships. You won't have wholeness in other areas of your life that are so critical. I was looking at the statistics, and a lot of them were about what people see when they look in the mirror. And it says that people don't like, really, who it is that's staring back at them. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, I think it can speak to a lot of things. It can speak to our physical makeup. It can speak to the things that are going on on the inside. It can speak to their self-perceptions. It can be their hurts speaking. And what I love about the question you asked is they don't like what's staring back at them when they look at themselves in the mirror. And this is so contrary to the way God wants us to see ourselves because Remember David and I think it's the 139th Psalm. Mm -hmm. I picture him standing before a mirror when he says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wow. I picture him looking in the mirror and being amazed at the creation of Almighty God. See, here's why people need to love themselves because we are creations of God. Yeah. Why would we hate, why would we not like a creation of God? Matter of fact, if we just said, ask people the question, should you love something that God created? Should you love something that God died for? Should you love something that God gave his son for? Wow. Every single one of us would say, absolutely. Sure. But if you put it in this terms, we need to love ourselves. Be like, oh, no, that's not scripture. You know, that's ungodly. That's gospel light. No, it's not gospel light. It's gospel. Yeah. It's what the scripture teaches us. We are masterpieces of God created in Christ Jesus, which means basically a masterpiece has its value in the fact that it's one of a kind, Yeah. right? And so each one of us is one of a kind. We are, the scripture says, the apple of God's eye, the crown jewel of his creation. Yeah. We're the very ones who caused God to say when he created, it's not just good, but it's very good after he created us. And so we need to have an identity of ourselves that is rooted and grounded in Christ. And we need to steward mm. God's creation. Wow, steward it. I think you taught in one of our times together that stewardship is not just managing the thing that you've been entrusted with, but growing the thing yes. that you've been entrusted with. Is that what you mean? Absolutely. You think about this, the parable of the talents. Gives one guy five, gives one guy two, gives one guy one. We all know the story. The guy with the five goes out, he invested, he gets five more, he gets 10. Guy with the two goes out, invests, gets two more, has four. The guy with the one, 
He digs a hole, puts it in the ground. The master comes back. He says, what do you got for me? He goes, well, listen, I know you didn't want me to lose anything. He says, I knew you were a hard man, so here's the one you gave me. And the master said, you wicked and lazy servant. You should have at least put it in a bank, got me some interest, right? And so here's the thing. God expects us to grow whatever it is that he entrusts to us. Including ourselves. We are the greatest gift. Mm. Our salvation is the greatest gift that God has given to us. God wants to grow that salvation. Yeah. We have to invest in us in order. Again, here's the, here's the caveat. I'm not talking about, you know, being conceited. I'm not talking about being stuck up. I'm not talking about, you know, not giving a care about anybody else and only focusing on you. I'm talking about investing in yourself so that you are spiritually healthy enough to have the impact on other people and for God that Jesus died and was resurrected for you to have. But to That's your, what I'm talking but about. But to your point, if you don't love yourself, if you don't recognize, <laughs> like David in that mirror, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If you don't love yourself, right. you can never walk in what you just talked about. You can't do it. I would imagine that you have low self-esteem, you don't think you're good enough, you don't think that you can, you don't pursue the opportunities that are in front of you. Right. I guess you could say like the man who hid the talent, we just throttle back and say, well, just gonna not, you know, not gonna make any waves. God made me what I am. Right. I'm not tall enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not talented enough, I don't speak well. I mean, a whole host of lies that the enemy feeds us and has us telling ourselves to really, what, keep us limited? Keep us limited, keep us from doing what God wants us to do, keep us from impacting people, keep us from being confident enough to step out in faith. A good friend of mine coined a phrase or a word, he calls it Godfidence. Mm. Not confidence, but Godfidence. Ooh, I like What's up, that. buddy, how you doing? <laughs> uh, That's good. Godfidence, and basically what he says is, of course we don't wanna have confidence in and of ourselves. Yeah but we wanna have confidence in who we are in Christ, who God has made us to be. Wow. And we should own who God has made us to be. We should be proud of who God has made us to be. We should want to let our light shine, Wow! right? That means we have to love ourselves. And when we think about this and we begin to really measure it up against scripture, it really is something that is taught so much throughout all of scripture. For example, we've all heard the scripture don't judge. Mm -hmm. And we've heard it said this way, in order for you to take the speck out of your brother's eye, first sure. take the two by four yeah, out of your exactly. eye, right? And here's what we conclude about that. Well, never tell somebody else what they should and shouldn't do, but that's not what that scripture says. Here's what it says. It says, take the two by four out of your own eye and then remove the speck from your brother's eye. It never says not to, but here's what it's saying. Make sure that you are healthy enough first wow. before you try to help somebody else to be healthy. Gosh. Because if you're not healthy and you try to help somebody else, you're not gonna help them be healthy. You're gonna duplicate in them what you are. You've got a teaching series that is helping us discover who God made us to be and helping us discover why it's important for us to love ourselves. And invest in yourself. Is that your goal? The goal here is to get people to invest in themselves so that they can be everything that God has called them to be. Okay. And I'll give you another example. I'm gonna tell you a made up story and listen from a Christian point of view. Okay. Okay. So there was this lady who had a sister and the lady had 13 people show up at her house for lunch unexpectedly. Her house wasn't cleaned. It wasn't picked up. She had dishes in the sink. The beds weren't made. The kids were, you know, toys were all over the place. And she had to fix a meal for these 13 people who showed up unexpectedly. Mm. And so she's frantically trying to get everything done. And she needs some help. I mean, it's clearly she's overwhelmed. She can't get it all done by herself. <laughs> it's chaos. And our sister is there. And our sister is just watching her run all around just going, check her out, there she goes again. Look at her going there again. And she keeps saying to her sister, can I get some help? Can I please get some help? And her sister said, no, 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 I'm not gonna help you right now because I got something more important to do. 
From a Christian perspective, how would we characterize the sister who refused to help the other sister that was running around frantically? Rude, inconsiderate. Selfish. Can't be bothered. Self-centered. <laughs> not putting other people first. That's what I would have right? said. But we all but know. But that's not the case. No. This is the story of Mary and Martha in the Bible. Oh, man. So we have Mary and Martha who are sisters. And Jesus and his 12 disciples show up at the house for lunch unexpectedly one day. Mary is chilling. She's, she's sitting at the feet of Jesus, right? Martha is frantically running all over the place, getting the house picked up and the dishes made and the kids' toys picked up and all these kind of stuff. And she is getting angry that Mary is sitting there doing nothing while she's serving and she tries to get Jesus in on it. She says, Jesus, would you help me and let her know that she's being selfish right now? And you know what Jesus said? I can't remember. He Tell said, me. Martha, Martha, mm -hmm. you are careful and troubled about many things, but Mary has chosen that one thing that is needful. What was Mary doing? Mary was taking time to invest in herself wow. by sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing words of eternal life that would help her to be everything that she could be wow. so that she could ultimately be more helpful to everybody who she comes into contact with. So this truth, loving ourselves, it's not a new age truth although New Age has taken it and distorted it. It's not an unbiblical truth, mm -hmm. although you'll hear preachers tell you that you should never say to love yourself. Jesus said love yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. So if we got a problem, we got a problem with Jesus, right? right? Right. So what we need to do is we need to take this so that we can become the people that God has called us to be. Wow. It is so important in our lives so we don't get abused by other people. Who is that person? Who is that person we're supposed to be? Different than the person we see when we look in the mirror. Describe that person. We're supposed to be people who love who God made us to be. Yep. Who accept who God has made us to be. If the Bible says if, if you have uh, the gift to give, do it wholeheartedly. If you have the gift of prophecy, go for it. If you have the gift of serving, be the best servant that you can be. In other words, we have to embrace who God has made us to be and be happy about it. God has made me to be a pastor. I'm so happy about being a pastor that I'm not trying to be anything but a pastor because this is what God has made me. I'm comfortable with who I am. But if you didn't know who you were spiritually, yeah. you're confident because you know who you are. You know that God made you special. You know how God sees you. As you're telling the story about how many people see themselves to be, it is in opposition to how God sees them. Yeah, absolutely. And how does God see us? God sees us through the eyes of Jesus. So many people think that God sees us through our mistakes and our failures and our past and our shortcomings. But the truth of the matter is that when God looks at those of us who are in Christ, He sees us through the eyes of Christ, through the lens of Christ, through the filter of the blood of Jesus. He sees us as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, which means we're in right standing with Him. He sees us as justified, just as if we never sinned. Wow. Let me say that again. God sees us as justified, just as if we never sinned. God sees us as masterpieces. God sees us as the crown jewel of His creation, the apple of His eye. He sees us as His sons. He sees us as His daughters. He sees us as heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. He sees us in that way. And for us not to see ourselves that way. Matter of fact, there's a story in the Bible. Finish that statement though. For us not to see ourselves as He sees for us For us what? not to see ourselves as He sees us is sin. Wow. And I'll show you that scripturally. There's a story of the 12 spies that went out to go check out the promised land. And God gave them a promise. He said that, I'm going to give you this land. He said to Joshua, he said to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon shall be yours, right? I'll be with you. And so they go out to the promised land to spy it out. And they come back and they say this. They say, we can't go up and take it mm -hmm. because there's giants in the land. And we are as grasshoppers mm -hmm. in their sight. Mm -hmm. The very next thing says that they brought an evil report to the children of Israel. 
Well, why was it evil? It was evil because they saw themselves differently than God saw them. Wow, that's good. And so what we need to realize is when we see ourselves differently than God sees us, it's evil. It's not, it's not humble. It, it's, it's a trap and a trick of the devil. It's a religious mentality that God wants us to totally break with. We need to look at ourselves through the eyes of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I think Jesus is, is phenomenal. To borrow an old saying that's kind of been played out, Jesus is all that in a bag of chips, right? <laughs> and we should be seeing the Jesus in us wow. all of the time. And that's not harmful. That is healthy. Yeah. That's what helps us to soar in life. That's what helps us to be the ambassadors of Christ that he's created us wow. to be. And all throughout the Bible, there is story after story after story of God actually working with people to get them to the point where they see themselves Whew. as he sees them. Wow. And the whole teaching series is actually based on one of those stories the stories of one of the greatest moms who's ever lived. I'm not talking about June Cleaver or Claire Huxtable or Lisa Santora, who's my wife, by the way. I'm talking about Hannah. Hannah was somebody who hated herself. She didn't like herself because she lived underneath a stigma. And the stigma was if you couldn't have kids in Bible times, you were cursed by God. And so she hated herself. She knew the problem was her because her husband had another wife. He didn't want to have another wife, but in Bible days, if your wife that you married couldn't have kids, you were allowed to go get another wife, which is a whole other story, a whole other theology. We could talk about that some other time. <laughs> but he went and he had another wife. Her name was Penaniah. I call her Penny. And Penny was having babies one right after the other. She was a baby factory. You winked at her, she got pregnant, right? But Hannah couldn't have any kids. And Penny would make Hannah miserable about it all the time. She would make fun of her. She would say, oh, look at Elk and me. We're going to go to bed right now. We're going to make some babies. You're going to stay out here. And she was miserable. And she used to torture her, the Bible says, when they were going up to the temple. Mm -hmm. She would torture on the way to church. Sounds like some families, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. She was miserable. She hated herself. And the whole story of Hannah is God getting her to a place where she saw herself as somebody that God could use, as somebody who was important, as somebody who was valuable, as somebody who was part of the plan of God, as somebody who God could use, not just in a little way, but in a huge way, wow. not just to give a baby to, but to change a nation. Got it. And so the whole Bible is really about us getting to the place where we see ourselves through the eyes of Christ. Wow. I want to thank you for being here and bringing us this uh, revelation because I know that many people watching needed to hear this today, that were struggling to understand their identity, who God sees you to be. And I believe this is a moment of release. It's a moment of freedom. It's our opportunity to really discover who it is God made us to be, who he sees us to be, and how he wants to position us through that for the greatest days of our life. Now, I know this topic may be a little difficult for some of you to get your arms around, and that's okay. But if you really think about it, doesn't it make sense? How can you help others and be a source of power and faith if you're fractured yourself? There are so many good people watching today who are desperate to make a difference in the world, but they're walking around wounded. It's time to get up. It's time to take care of yourself. It's time to take an inventory of all the hurts, disappointments, and injuries. Lift them up to Jesus and receive your oxygen mask of healing and deliverance. I want to challenge you to learn to love yourself and through the process to become a better version of the person God called you to be. You 2.0. Hopefully, Damon and I got you started on the journey today, but we need to continue. Like I said, God birthed this revelation in me a few years ago, and it resulted in a training curriculum that I call Oxygen Mask. Since then, thousands of people have encountered this material and have learned to apply the biblical principle of loving themselves to spiritual health. I want to bring those years of training to you with today's special offer. This offer includes a five-part course called Oxygen Mask, plus a complete set of other material that I know you're going to enjoy. And every time you respond with your financial seed to Destin to Win, you're not just getting great resources. More importantly, you're helping me to tell the world that with Jesus, they are destined to win. 
So stay tuned, my announcer will tell you a little bit more. Watch this. When asked about the greatest commandment, Jesus replied with the timeless words recorded in Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. But wait, have you ever stopped and asked, how do I love myself? Pastor Frank Santora has uncovered a very simple but biblical truth. We cannot change the world, impact the kingdom, or do great exploits for God until we first learn to love the person in the mirror. Of course, we don't want to have confidence in and of ourselves. Yeah. But we want to have confidence in who we are in Christ, who God has made us to be. Wow. And we should own who God has made us to be. We should be proud of who God has made us to be. We should want to let our light shine. Wow. Right? That means we have to love ourselves. Today, Pastor Frank Santora wants to help you start loving and transforming the life of the most important person in your world, you. You don't get this in church every day. But the truth is, when you love yourself, it's easy to love others. When you love yourself, you can change the world. Call or go online right now and discover the proper biblical pattern to love yourself God's way. Not hype, not arrogance, but true biblical confidence is just one call away. The first 100 people to respond right now with their gift of just $25 or more to this ministry will receive Pastor Frank's Love Yourself Bundle. In this bundle, you'll receive Pastor Frank's five-message series called Oxygen Mask. Pastor Frank shares in this powerful series the keys to loving ourselves to spiritual health so we can be a greater help to those around us. Each message in this series is designed to break you free from discouragement and self-condemnation. You'll discover how to love yourself in a brand new way through this anointed content. This series includes the sermons, Love Yourself, The Oxygen of Sustaining Grace. I've decided to put my mask on the oxygen of prayer, and follow through. And there's more. With your gift of $25 or more, you'll receive the five message series oxygen mask and a DVD of today's full uncut interview with Pastor Frank and TV personality Damon Davis. You only saw a small portion of their discussion. Go behind the scenes as these two titans of faith talk about the secrets to loving yourself God's way. God wants us to love ourselves. God wants us to be able to go through life where we can impact other people. If we can't breathe, how are we going to help other people to receive the breath of life, to wow. receive Christ? Wow. And so God wants to make sure we're healthy, so He invests in us so that we can invest in other people. Pick up the phone or go online now. This is your first step towards loving the most important person in your life, you. You need more, and it starts with connecting with the revelation Pastor Frank shares in today's exclusive offer. For your gift of $25 or more, you'll receive all the revelation you need, the five-message series, Oxygen Mask, and a DVD of today's uncut message. These resources are limited, and once they're gone, they're gone. So don't wait. Call now or place your order online. Ministry partners are standing by. We hope you've enjoyed Pastor Frank's message today. We want to encourage you to continue on your journey as you discover God's purpose for your life. With your gift, you make all of this possible so that we can see lives changed all over the world. Join us every week for Destin Win and visit us online at frankcentora.cc. If you're in the New York City or Connecticut area, we invite you to visit us at one of our locations or join us online every Sunday at faithchurch.cc live.